information down. So a spanning tree, spanning tree of a connected graph. And it has to be a connected graph. So you can't have a spanning tree in a graph that is disconnected. Because remember, the whole definition of a tree is that it's connected. Is a subgraph. We've gone through the concepts of subgraphs, so you should be okay with that. Which is a tree that includes all the vertices of the graph. And that just comes direct from the definition of spanning. So it's essentially just com combining your definition of spanning and your definition of a tree in the graph. So let's just do an example. So let's go and draw one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I will default to this example pretty often. So we have this here. Now, if you're going to draw a spanning tree of this, a subgraph of this graph, G, the first thing that you're going to need is all the vertices. So you're going to need V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. But you're not finished, because remember, it has to be connected, so you, it has to be minimally connected, because it's a tree. So you're going to have to bring across some of the edges. This happens to be an easy one to do. That is a tree. That is a spanning tree. So it is a tree, T6, it's a spanning tree of G. But we can do a different kind of tree as well. So when you're taking out spanning trees, you will, can have more than one type of spanning tree. So you can have different, they're not, they're not always going to be the same. And that is actually going to cause some issues for you a little bit later, but it's going to be fun issues. Okay. So let's go through this and just find another example of a tree. So another example of a tree would be, you know, having it like that and like that. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. So it's still a T6 situation. It's still a spanning, but it is not isomorphic to your other original T6. Why? Because they are labeled. So that's just going to be some of the concepts that you're going to look at, look at. And it is not even isomorphic, it was unlabeled. And that's going to be a question that pops up in your lecture notes where you get to play around with it and stuff. So you can get more than one type of spanning tree out of your original graph. Okay, so now you know that you can get more than one type of spanning tree out of your connected graph. The question is, Will it always contain a spanning tree, though, if the graph is connected? And this leads us to a theorem, which is, yes, any connected graph contains a spanning tree. So let's write that down. So we have our theorem statement where any connected graph contains a spanning tree. Okay, how do we go about proving that? So we're going to have to actually just look at the idea or the approach of taking a connected graph and removing edges until it becomes spanning. Can we do that? Can we always have that occur? And again, we're going to use that whole concept where we say G minus edge, what happens to it? And remember, when you have a connected graph, you can have cycles in it. Remember, it's only the tree that doesn't have to have cycles in it. So we're going to have to look at cases in regards to that. We're going to be like, okay, firstly, does the original connected graph contain any cycles or does it not? If it doesn't contain any cycles, well then sweet, because you really then have a spanning tree occurring. It is literally the graph itself. If it does contain cycles, then we have to basically remove the edges of the cycles. So we have to remove at least one edge of the cycle, you know, to break it so that it becomes a minimally connected graph. And, well, until it reaches the point where the graph is minimally connected. And once the graph is minimally connected, hey, sweet, there we go, we have the spanning tree. So let's go through this. Proof. 
Right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our canvas that we're going to be working from. And the part of that canvas is that A part. So it refers to the fact that we have any connector graph. So let's utilize that and say, let G be a connector graph. So that is our canvas, basically. Like, okay, fine, we have G, G is connected graph. And then we start with the easiest one approach, the easiest version of this. And that is, if it has zero cycles, then it's, then it's its own spanning tree. So if G contains no cycles in G, then G itself is a tree, so it is its own spanning tree. Okay, so we've done the easy part. Now we're going to say, okay, let G have a cycle. Let's, let G just have one cycle. Let's, let's not overcomplicate our life. We can sort out what happens if it has one cycle, and then we can just do that whole repeat removing of the cycles. So let G have a cycle. We're going to name that cycle C because we're very lazy about our naming. And let there be an E in that cycle. And that's the E we're going to remove. So now we look at G minus that edge. Now if G minus that edge gives us a can we know it's connected because it's part of the cycle. And we know that it has all the same vertices. Then we look at the idea of does it have, does this new graph have cycles or does it not have cycles? If it does not have cycles, then G minus E is the spanning tree for G. If it does have cycles, then we remove another edge in another cycle and follow the process. So now we, we first have to tell the user or the reader that, hey, this G minus E is still connected and it still has the same order as the original graph because we need the order to be the same for it to be spanning. So we need to tell the user or reader that the G is connected and we've proven that it's connected by that other theorem and the order is the same as that of G. So now we can look at the properties of this G minus E to see is it does it have any cycles? If it doesn't have any cycles, then hey, it is the spanning tree for G. If it does have cycles, we have to go back. So now we go if G minus that edge has no cycles, then it is a tree and a spanning tree and we can say it's a spanning tree because we said that the order is the same as that of G. Of the original graph G. If G minus E has cycles, we remove another edge from another cycle. And then we, you know, repeat the process. And we keep on doing that part there. So we keep on looping basically through this situation where does it have a cycle? We remove that edge. Is it a graph now with no cycles? Well, if it's a graph now with no cycles, then it's a tree. If it still has cycles, we just remove another edge. So we just keep repeating that until we end up with a graph that has no cycles in it. But now we need to, again, explain to our user or reader the idea that if we remove another edge, we're still going to have the same number of vertices. So we just we still have the original graph just with fewer edges. So there is going to be a point where this, you know, hashtag version of it where we keep on removing edges because it's a finite graph there's going to be a point where we can stop, where there will be no more cycles in this graph, but it will still be connected. So it will still have the same order. 
So let's go ahead and write that. So this will leave the order of the graph the same as the original. but with fewer edges, but with less edges. But G is finite, as G is finite. Therefore, it has a finite number of edges. This loop of removing edges has to stop, basically. There must be a point where you have no cycles left and the order is the same as the original graph because again no matter how many times you remove an edge you still have those those original vertices and if that's the case you will get a spanning tree coming out of it no matter what so that's the end of your proof so again, you start off with giving your canvas to work on, which is just any connector graph. And then you say, okay, if G contains no cycles, sweet, G is a tree and it is a spanning tree of itself. If G does have a cycle, then we name an edge in that cycle and we remove it. Then we know from what we've done previously, if we remove that edge, it's still going to be connected and the order of the graph is going to be the same as the original graph, which is what we need because we want a spanning tree, which means we want all the vertices to remain. And then we look at this new graph, which is this, a subgraph, basically. It is going to look like it either is going to have cycles or it's not going to have cycles. If it doesn't have cycles, then the G minus E is your spanning tree. It's your subgraph which has no cycles, therefore it is a spanning tree. If it does have cycles, we go back and remove another edge. So we can basically here yeah, we're going in and we're saying E1 is removed, minus E2, you know, but we know from removing an edge it still has the same number of vertices and it's still connected. And then we look at that new graph and go through the process. Does it have a cycle? Does it not have a cycle? But what we also know is that because our graph has a finite number of edges and vertices, there will be a point where we will no, have no more cycles in it. It's just an impossibility to not have a stopping point. And because we will have a stopping point where after we remove a certain number of edges, we still have a connected graph. Because remember, it's always going to be connected if we remove our edge because all our edges come from cycles. We have this connected graph. And this connector graph has the same number of vertices as the original graph, and that's this part here. Therefore, that is a spanning tree. So any connector graph contains a spanning tree, and we're done with this proof.